Hello. Happy Thursday. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me in this video, How to Pack a Lunchbox. I want to take a moment to just share with you the things that I know in packing my lunch, saving myself money, time, worry, stress, and eating that aligns with my goals. I know for a fact that the foods I'm putting in my mouth during the day while I'm away from home are in fact fueling my body and getting me closer to my goals. So we'll start with step one. Step one is to choose a lunchbox. You'll need a lunchbox that's going to match your needs. Um, if you're not going to be away from home for very long or you have a mini fridge at work or some place that you can store other ingredients and things that you need for your lunch, you probably don't need that big of a lunchbox. But if you're commuting, if you're working long shifts, you're going to be away from home for more than one meal, a bigger lunchbox is definitely going to be something that you're looking for. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been witness to catalog parties and things like that where people are selling these thrifty totes and things like that. Look for a lunchbox that's insulated because you're going to want to keep your cold foods cold and the leftovers that you have to reheat at work or wherever you're going cold as well. So insulated lunchbox, and I really like ones that zip. I think um, the cute little totes are cute, but if they don't seal all the way around, of course, your, your cool factor is escaping, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, the second thing, which might be a no-brainer but needs to be mentioned, you need ice packs. I like this brand, um, but it doesn't really matter, of course, as long as it freezes, it will keep your stuff cold. Um, those just happen to be durable, big enough for what I need, and I find them at my local farm and fleet store. So, um, camping sections usually carry ice packs. If you don't know, just ask the assistant at the store where you're shopping, and they will be glad to help, I'm sure. Um, now let's talk about cost. There is some investment, of course, in buying your lunchbox, buying the ice packs, and then the containers that are going to transport your foods. So, that being said, I'm a busy mom, and I'm also a thrifty mom, and I like to save some money. So, my children like to drink um, these little chocolate milks or whatever on our drives. You know, we'll stop and pick one up. It's a special treat after school whatever. But I saved this. Um, this container is about 8 ounces. And then I can put like V8 from my big jar in that. I can put milk if I'm going to be transporting my healthiest meal of the day and having that for lunch as well. My little packets of Shakeology. Pack my milk or juice. And then my immersion blender comes in very handy. Looks like this. Um, two pieces that pull apart. I can wind that up. Put it in my lunchbox and then pack my other ingredients and ta-da! I can have a healthy shake on the go. Cost me maybe five dollars with all my ingredients put right there. Um, I don't have to scramble when I'm at work wondering what's going to be served for lunch, uh, what's on the menu in the dining room, you know, just hoping and praying for a healthy choice. This, packing your lunch just takes the anxiety out of eating clean, getting healthy, getting fit because then you know what your plan is and you're planning for success. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So packing a lunch really, really does behoove you and really does propel you toward your goals. Now, um, another fun thing, there's like personal ice cream containers. That is an excellent size for measuring out a portion of nuts. Um, one of my favorite snacks is banana chips with almonds, almonds, pistachios, peanuts, whatever you want you can put in there. It's just a little, a little container that's really portable. Um, that would even fit in your purse. You can keep that full of nuts in your car. So if you're in a jam and you know you're getting hungry and you don't want to reach for the dollar menu because that's not going to get you to your goals, there, right in your car, you have some almonds. And you don't have to transport these big quantities of things and, you know, risk spilling them, wasting them, whatever. It's just a lot more feasible if you have the right size containers. So, of course, then you can buy things at Walmart. Um, I have to show this because this is one of my favorites. This miscellaneous bowl, my fiance picked these up. I wish I could find them again. I'm sure they're out there. Um, in the middle is a spot for dip or hummus. I use this for hummus, and then I put my vegetables right there around it. You can put peanut butter in there and um, add your favorite fruits around that. Whatever. Get creative. The key to success in lunchbox packing really is knowing your personal preferences, knowing what the purpose for your lunch is. Are you packing a couple of meals because you're not going to be home for a while? Are you road tripping and you want to eat healthy on your road trip? Fill in the blank. What is it? I used to drive um, an hour one way for nursing school, so I knew 
you know, by mid morning, I'd be wanting a snack. I needed a lunch. I needed a snack for my drive home. And then if it was going to be a very long day, I would need a salad for supper as well. So just plan it out. Just be really thoughtful and diligent in your actions. And that's really going to total your success. Um, another thing, I love these bottles. I'm not going to name drop and mention brands, but you've seen them everywhere. The cool thing is that they have right along the side, um, <laughs> there we go, they have measurements so I can keep track of my water intake. Also, my immersion blender will blend right in this so I can pack, I can drink my water on the way to work and then use this container for the shake that I'm going to have at lunch with my immersion blender and my container with milk or juice or whatever. So it, you know, it's kind of like a game of real life Tetris, but it works. And um, I can assure you I've saved a lot of money, um, a lot of time. I don't have to leave work to go drive through somewhere and hope and pray there's not a line at the local fast food place or just wonder if, you know, the refrigerated sandwiches that I like to pick out of the deli case at the gas station are going to be there or whatever. You just, you take a lot of anxiety out of your day when you plan for this. Now, I've comprised a list of good lunchbox food. I have here nuts, fruit, yogurt, cottage cheese, salad, and then veggies with dip, like I said in my cool container, veggies with hummus. Um, things to, if you have access to a microwave, pack your leftovers. That's a really great way to get rid of them. Um, if you don't like leftovers, really work into, um, into that. Try maybe just one side a day for your leftovers. Just try just try, and every time it gets easier, I promise. I've had a lot of people who don't like leftovers, and, you know, it just becomes routine. If you practice at anything, the skill becomes more perfected. That's just a given fact. So, um, frozen individual veggies. A lot of brands make those little containers. I like these. This box is seven ounces, and it's like a dollar at Walmart. I love that. That is so easy to throw in. Um, you know, if I have leftover turkey meatballs or chicken breast or whatever from the night before, I can grab a box of veggies and ta-da, I have lunch, a really well-balanced lunch. Um, things that are not so good lunchbox food here, I have, um, here, we'll go this way. I have sandwiches. Uh, you know, I learned this at a very young age with school box lunches. Um, that bread, I, no matter what you do with bread and an ice pack, it gets soggy. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it just does. So if you figured out a way to transport your bread and not have it get soggy, kudos to you. But in my experience, I don't think that's a very good lunchbox food. Um, and if I, and I'm not a gambler, I don't like to run that risk. So I know that a salad will be sealed in my container and I can keep it fresh. And then, you know, I don't have to wonder when I pull that sandwich out of my lunch bag, is it going to be dry? <laughs> um, Prepackaged meals. I know those are advertised to be, you know, directed at people on the go and they're really healthy and they've made them really light and they're going to match your diet plan and whatever. But there's a lot of sodium in those, a lot of additives, preservatives, just things that are not the best choice for you. Now, is a prepackaged meal better than a quarter pounder cheeseburger and a medium fry? Yes. It's all relative, of course. So if you're in a bind and that's what you have, good. Don't beat yourself up about it. But like I said, the more you practice, the more whole your food is, the more fresh your food is, the better it is for you. Um, nothing is on my not-so-good lunchbox food list. No, you can't just skip lunch. You can't just not pack a lunch. Um, you need to eat. Your body needs you to eat. When you don't eat regularly or enough calories, your body then goes into survival mode and it, start, it thinks you're starving. So it's going to hoard any of the calories you've had before and really delay your progress because it's thinking we're in a, a crisis situation. And so it's going to save all of those calories and fat stores because your body is very primal, believe it or not, and doesn't know when you're going to eat again. So how can you avoid this? How can you make the most of your lunches? Food prep. And food prep will be a video for another time, but what you do is just pick a day of the week that works for you. And at first it seems, you know, kind of like an insurmountable task. You're, you're planning for the whole week. How are you ever going to know on a Sunday afternoon what you're going to be hungry for on Thursday? Who knows? But the beautiful thing is that when you have these foods ready to go, 
you've prepared chicken breasts for your salads, you've prepared quinoa for the week, or vegetables, you've cut up fresh vegetables and packaged them out individually, um, you then reach for that because it's already there. It's convenient. You're busy. You don't have to be forced to make a tough choice. And maybe not forced is the right word, but, you know, you feel like you're just in a pickle. You're going to do whatever works at that moment. So plan ahead and food prep. Um, it really can become a nice thing to do for yourself, you know, a time to just take some time to listen to music and chop up vegetables and boil your eggs for snacks and bake chicken and whatever. You can make it a social time with you and your spouse. Do it together, chopping vegetables and planning and preparing. It can be something that's really um, more love than labor. So just know that there are ways to get you to your goal. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. You can comment below this video or find me on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Let's Be Fit with Bree. I'm Bree, and I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great day.